Hello and welcome to the second video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover importing assets, which will be our first character, and exploring some of the visual aspects of our game. Remember to click subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the assets and scripts to this series there too, along with plenty of other things, and you can also join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So last time we had this object right here, and it's just a raw image, it's just a big white square, but how do we make this big white square into character? It's actually very simple. We need to import some assets. What are the assets we're going to import? Well, they're just basically going to be images, but it's how we use those images to change them into actual game assets. So what we need to do is make sure that all of our assets in this window down here are tidy. So we have this assets folder and we have the scenes folder. And this sample scene is what we're in now. By default, Unity will always give you that sample scene. But we need to make sure we are in this assets folder. Let's right click, create, and click on folder. Let's call this folder characters. So this particular folder will store any character assets we use. And we've got quite a few that we're going to use because we're gonna have different characters throughout this visual novel. And the first one we're going to import is going to be called, we'll call it Kasumi. Obviously this is Japanese focus, so I think that's an appropriate name. So I'm going to drag and drop this folder into the characters folder. And I didn't want to do it then. Let me try that again. There we go. So we'll give it just a second to kind of import everything. You'll have that little progress bar going along. And if you click the link in the description or in the pinned comment, it will take you to my Patreon page where it'll tell you where to get these assets. So remember any scripts, any assets we use, head over to Patreon, you'll be able to get them there. So once that's imported, what is in there? Well. If we go in, we'll see we have a couple of different folders. And what these folders represent is different states our character is in. So obviously in a visual novel game, they can be happy, sad, frustrated, angry, eyes open, eyes closed, all kinds of different things. So we need to have various iterations of our character. And our character that we're going to put in this particular um, image is going to be one of these. So let's select. Uh, let's just select this one for now. Now we can't just drag and drop the asset into the scene because it's not going to quite work as we intend it to. So what we can do is if we select raw image here, and if you look down here, you can select a texture. Now you could either select the little button next to it and find the right texture, or you can drag and drop right there. Now, the way this is set up, you may come across an instance where they do not appear as uh, like a PNG. You know, their background is non-existent in this case. So let's explore if that is the case. So let's have a look at this image. And you can see that for me, the texture type is Sprite 2D and UI. Now for some, it may be displayed as default. So what I'm going to do is set this one as default and click apply. Now you'll see that this asset now has a white background. So you can tell right there that this particular asset is not set up correctly for the style of game we're doing. It needs to be a sprite. So if that is the case for your textures, what you would need to do is up here, texture type, set it back to sprite, 2D and UI, and then click on apply. Now, if we go to our game view, it doesn't look fantastic. So we need to change the visual aspects of what our character looks like. So if we go back to our scene view, click on our character, and let's select the move tool. Now, what we can do is rather than try and find the asset in our asset window, we can click on it right here, and it will highlight it for us down below. And if we click again, 
we need to change one of the settings in here. See this one down here where it's got advanced generate mipmap. Click it so it's ticked and then click on apply. Now it will present it a little bit better. However, in its default state, Unity still doesn't quite display it correctly. So what we need to do is make sure our scale is set to one rather than 1.3. Now this doesn't have much of an impact when it comes to building the game itself. It's only when we're trying to develop the game inside Unity that this, not really error, but this setting will allow it to look a bit funky. So what you need to do is here where it has free aspect, drop that menu down and untick low resolution. And what that will do is it will refocus everything within the game view and it'll allow us to build one to one against how the game looks. So now you can see she looks a little bit better. She'll look much better once we have a proper background, and a proper game in place, but that's beside the point right now. So what can we do with our character right here? Well, what we can do is let's expand her so she's a little bit bigger. So let's have her set as 500 by 500. And you can see that she's kind of off the edge of the screen there. So let's use our Rect tool to just realign her in the correct position. And we'll have her just there. Head back to the game view. And there we go. It's starting to look like a visual novel already. So let's explore some of these other assets, but I don't really want to get rid of Kasumi over here. So what I am going to do for now is I am going to rename this one. So you can either press F2 or right click and rename, and let's call the character Kasumi. Let's have confused. Now, what we can we do? Well, let's hold control and press D. And what that will do is duplicate. Now, if we select our move tool, we can drag that duplicate out. Now, remember, it won't snap into position unless you use the rec tool. So let's snap it up against the left side. And there's two of her now, twins. Let's now have this character facing the other way. How do we do that? Well, this is the beauty of over here, basically. <laughs> Simple as that. So let's look on the rotation here. X, Y, and Z. Well, what happens if we rotate the Y by 180? She faces the other way. What we've done there is rotate the image so it is quite literally the inverse of the original. So there's literally no difference between them apart from that one is technically backwards. And that's how we can have it as, you know, she could be on either side of the screen. I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could always find some assets that have many more different versions of a character, but we're using free assets here. So we need to work with what we've got. There are different things that we could do. So we could have um, a different, different one in here. So let's choose this one. And there we go. So remember, because we've used that now, you see how it looks a little bit different. This one looks nice and smooth and in line with our game. This one's a bit jagged. Do you remember those mip maps? So any time that you use an asset, generate those mip maps, apply, and it will look more in line with how it's supposed to. Excellent. So. There are different things that we're going to have to do with this. Um, I think the main feature is making sure that everything is aligned correctly. And to do that, we need to make sure that our canvas is set correctly as well. So all this time, I've kind of brushed over the, um, the canvas itself. So I think it's time to explain what the canvas actually is. So you'll notice all the objects we've added so far are inside the canvas, apart from the event system. The canvas you can think of as the be all and end all of what is displayed for UI. So anything UI generated will be displayed on the canvas. Think of it as Unity's drawing board. So it's all good, but how do we make this canvas so it fits the screen correctly? Because Let's face it, right now it's 
it's primitive. It's set, but it's not perfect for exporting. So if we were to export this game now, it would look a bit weird. So let's go to the canvas and let's go down here. So you have a render mode here, screen space, world space. Changing these different things will give you different uh, views on things. So you could have the camera, you could have it as an overlay. It doesn't really matter too much. You could have it pixel perfect. The good thing is if you hover over some things, it will give you a little description of what they are. We don't really need to worry too much about any of this at the moment. The one thing we do need to worry about is the canvas scaler. This is important to getting it to display on pretty much any screen. What we need to do, instead of having it a constant pixel size, we need it to scale with the screen size. And you'll see when you do that, it will change how things look here. And it's important to make sure that by default, you have a resolution which is pretty standard. And I would say 1080 is pretty standard. So what we need to do is change the X to 1920 by 1080. And then we need to make sure that we match the width and the height perfectly in the middle to gauge the perspective pretty much perfect. So we need to set it as 0 0.5. Now you'll notice at this point, the characters look like they have gotten much smaller. But if we go to game view, yeah, they're still smaller, but they still look okay. So we just need to realign these characters to where they should be. So there and there. But you may need to change the scale as well. So let's change Kasumi to 1000 by 1000. Is that too big? That might be too big. Actually, it might not be too big because if we go to our game view now, uncouple it and increase, you can see just how much it will scale correctly with the game. So if we shrink it, she scales once again. She doesn't stay that constant size. So 1000 by 1000 does seem a little bit big. So I'm going to get rid of Kasumi confused and we're just going to focus on the original one for now. Let's have her as 600 by 600. And let's stick her down in the corner and snap it. I say that does look a little bit small, doesn't it? So what happens if we uncouple our game? Yeah, I think we do need to make her a little bit bigger. 600 by 600 is probably too small. So it's at this point where things will probably start clicking in place for you and you'll start designing your game how you want. You'll find the correct measurements that you need. So lastly, let's actually save our scene. So hold control, press S or go to file and save scene. Remember that this is the sample scene, so you don't need to save as, it will just save the scene. So next tutorial, what will we cover? Well, let's cover some background visuals so it's not just a blue screen. And let's also add some background music because I feel getting those two things into place will really start to make it feel more like a game and we'll only be three tutorials deep into the project. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial in the series. And I will see you next time.